I really love reading portfolios of the poor, and this is the reason why. The book went into a discussion of people, human beings. They happen to be poor. They happen to live in poor areas. However, they are human beings. They have lives just the same as everywhere else. Too many times in my profession, economics, we treat them, and it's really them out there, as different, as if they are different from everybody else. Um, the only difference is that they're poor. They face different institutions, different institutional structures. And what I really loved about the book is just it taught us that they're human beings facing similar problems to anyone anywhere else. And so what we should do is to treat them as humans who are responding to different kinds of incentives, different kind of institutional structures. And we should be building our economics, our theories, our development policies based on that. I was born and raised in Ghana. I grew up in a very small village. I was lucky enough I had a relative who took me through the school system. I was lucky enough that I was able to pass some exams and go to the next level. So I made it through the Ghanaian education system, but a lot of it was luck. I got help many steps along the way. There are people who weren't as lucky, who may have gone to different schools, who may have just had some life experiences, a father died, a mother died, and there wasn't a relative there. And that's the only difference between the two of us. Many of those who were left behind in Ghana, in my hometown, in the village, are as smart, smarter than I am. When you're comparing the two of us, because I happen to live in the United States, there's a sense that I'm a little bit different. I look at those people, and many of them are much smarter than I am. It's just their life trajectories happen to be different. And so as we're building our models, as we're thinking our, about our theories, as we are doing development economics for the poor, it's always great to be reminded that they're the same as us. And for me, as I read the book, Portfolios of the Poor, just many of the characters just remind me of people I grew up with in the village. I could see many of them, the shopkeeper, the trader, the person who is uh, sewing, um, they all resonate to me. And what I love about the book is that it treats them as individuals, as human beings who are trying to get ahead. And that was fascinating. That was just wonderful. What I loved about the research in the book, and I think the book refers to them as the diaries. This is where they get information on particular individuals over time, saving habits, etc. Is that it's on the individual level and it's following that individual and figuring out how that individual makes choices given the environment, given the institution around them. It's filling a gap in the literature. Many times, many of the surveys are sort of point in time. You go out there, you just ask them a fixed set of questions. How much do you eat? What is your wealth level, etc.? This follows an individual over time and tries to get at the bottom of the decisions they make, particularly the financial decisions they make. So I think it's actually a wonderful, a wonderful uh, exercise. It's given us information that we cannot get from the existing studies out there. So I do a lot of research work using what are called living surveys. Sometimes they're panels, so they do follow them over time. However, sometimes it's you know, every five years. Um, they call them quasi-panels. Okay, So um, this book, by going through the diaries, will give you a different view, a different picture, if you will, of individuals in poor countries. As regards where the profession is going, that's always, um, it's always a gamble. I don't know where the profession is going to be 20 years from now. I can tell you that in my own research, the direction that the book goes in, the diaries, is a direction I think is important. It's a direction that's going to influence my own research. Many people, for example, are looking at what are called the bottom billion or bottom three billion, the lower parts of the pyramid. We have to study that. It's the majority of humanity. There's actually, if you aggregate it, although each individual is poor, it's a huge percentage of the world's activity, the world GDP. So I think we should study that. I think those kinds of things will be getting more and more attention over time. My own research 
currently is on mobile technologies and electronic markets. And for that, we need to know at the individual level how poor people are organizing their lives financially. So I think the work in the diaries will be of immense uh, use for me, and I suspect for many others as we go forward. Um, I think it's a complement to randomized experiments, which is the big uh, field today in developing economics, but it's different. There you are testing one particular model or one particular intervention, and so you try it on these people, you take out the intervention, try it on somewhere else. Make, you know, make sure the samples are random, look at the difference. Here you're taking individuals and you're following them over time. You're looking at their budget sets, you're looking at their intertemporal decisions, decisions across time. So I think it's different and I believe that more and more people over time will be following that kind of research. I definitely will. I look at the United States, I look at all the friends and people I have. I've lived here for quite a number of uh, years now. Poor people, rich people, and they're different, but at the same time, they're the same. The richest person has, believe it or not, budget issues. There are some fabulously rich people who are in debt. There are some very poor people who have savings more than I have. Okay, so you have the full spectrum. And the same is true of the poor. You have the same spectrum of different behaviors and different activities. And so again, just wanted to put in a plug for everything that is in the book. People of the world, we're all the same just that we face different institutions.